Hello there everyone, this is UXW Bill. I'm going to open up this video by saying that if you happen to be looking for a how-to, this isn't it. Please go ahead and turn this off now and keep looking, but ideally you really should be hiring a professional to undertake this sort of work. Are you still here? Good! Welcome to the video. Glad to have you here. The seasons are definitely changing here in the United States as well as the rest of the world. There's that chill in the air that tells us fall is coming, the days are getting shorter pretty soon. Won't be too much longer and we'll change our mind from thinking about running the air conditioning to turning on the heat. And if you happen, haven't done so already, I would definitely recommend that you take a moment before you need to. Go turn on your furnace. Run it briefly in the heating mode. Make sure that it actually happens to work. It'll be a lot easier and maybe even a little cheaper to get service now instead of when everyone else needs it at the same time you do. Oh, and don't forget to change your furnace filter, or clean it, such as the case may be. What we're going to do today is take a look at a train 92% efficient furnace, 80,000 BTU heating capacity from 2003. This is in a house that was abandoned. That, come, that becomes important later. And I believe that the problem with this has to do with the gas valve being bad. We'll elaborate on that in just a bit. Meanwhile, let's go down there and start making a few checks. I've already done the electrical tests. I know that the gas valve is getting power from the furnace control board. I also know that the coil in the valve has electrical continuity. I have reason to believe that this furnace was underwater. And whenever that happens, a lot of people will tell you, you know, just write the furnace off completely. I am not one of those people, but at a bare minimum, anything that comes into contact with gas needs to be replaced, and everything else in the furnace certainly needs to be inspected. There's no hard and fast evidence of this furnace having been submerged, nothing like a water line. There's only some telltale rusting, but that could easily have come from the condensing portions of the furnace leaking over the years. But I still think that this thing was probably underwater for a few different reasons. First, when this house was abandoned, the pipes did burst, and according to what I've been told, not only did the neighbors see water going up to like the third or fourth step of the basement access, the water company also noticed that there had been approximately 4,000 cubic feet of water used after the pipes happened to burst. Now this furnace does work in the air conditioning mode, and when I looked at it a couple months ago and I walked into this house, it was just running uncontrollably. Every blower it had was on, from the draft inducer to the main blower. And that typically means that something tripped the high limit. I believe that the gas valve stuck open, and now that it has become stuck closed, because every time I have tried to operate the heat, although power is supplied to the gas valve and the control board goes through all the proper motions, the gas valve never actually opens. And as far as the control board having potentially gotten wet, if it did, what probably saved it was the fact that the electricity was off by reason of their not having paid the bill. You let an electronic device dry out, and most of the time, they'll actually be fine. This draft inducer also sounds absolutely terrible. But what we'll do, just to make sure that everything is copacetic on the inlet side of the gas valve, that the gas pressure is where it ought to be, I'm going to use a manometer to take a pressure reading here, because if the gas pressure is incorrect, that could certainly also cause problems. I'm pretty sure of my diagnosis, though. I believe that this gas valve got wet, Initially, at some point, it's stuck open. Now it seems to be stuck closed. Maybe a little later on or in another video, we'll actually pop the cover off of it and see. But for right now, what I'm going to do is pop out the manometer here and just take a look at the gas pressure reading. Unfortunately, these train furnaces and this 36G gas valve from White Rogers, they don't have a nice little threaded boss that you can screw an adapter into. You just have to stick a clear piece of tubing in here after backing out this set screw, although you probably could get something threaded with this same pitch and diameter that's hollow to use as an adapter. But what you're supposed to do, and this makes me nervous, you stick your hose in here, seal it up as best you can, connect the other end to your manometer, and you take your pressure reading. There's one here for the inlet, and usually there's another one for the outlet somewhere 
on this particular series of gas valve. But this is just one of the things I do not happen to like about train equipment. It is certainly far, far away from being my first choice. I fully expect I'll be caned about that in the video comments. I just ask that if you do so, please be reasonable in applic application of your caning. <laughs> Now, it requires about 800 hands to do this, which is more than I have, and certainly so when running a video camera. So we'll pause the video for a moment, and I'll use the hold function on the manometer so you can see what I saw. Well, it looks like that's where the video comes to an end for today. It is a little bit difficult to take an inlet gas pressure reading off of these valves because the tubing tends to leak, but usually you can hold it down and get a satisfactory seal with just your fingers, and in doing that, the highest reading I've been able to get is 7.92 inches water column, which is certainly not enough. We'd want at least 10 for a natural gas system such as this. So I think the next step here is put everything back together for right now. I still think there is a problem with this gas valve, but I need to contact the gas company and probably have them service or adjust the regulator on this house just so we can be starting with the right kind of gas pressure and definitely rule out any failure of the gas valve as a probable cause for this furnace's problems. So stay tuned, there will be a future installment to this video. As always, I welcome your constructive commentary, so please do let me know what you happen to be thinking, and until next time, this has been UXW Bill from another fun basement in an old house. Check out all that old oil burner stuff over there. Yeah, somebody just left all that laying there. And there's what looks like a blower motor over there. Although you can hardly see that. Unless, pleasingly, there's a lot of this kind of thing around. <laughs> but such are the joys of old homes. You could put a beater thing in there. Yeah, Marae, you man. <sighs> he is resistant. The force is strong. <laughs>